What's up, Zox fam? And we're back with some more dislike. Now, a few of you guys have actually been DMing me on Discord. Like, yo, Zox, listen, the Flavor Echo is coming up. I still don't know who I want to pick. Uh, I know it's random, but who would you pick if you had to pick out of the options that we were given? So, we're going to go ahead and get into my top 10 espers that I feel like would be the most beneficial for you guys to select from the Flaming Echo. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is random, but if you can at least get one of these espers, I feel like that's a W. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Definitely make sure you guys like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the exclusive content. But let's go ahead and start. All right. So first things first, this is in no particular order because, like I said, it is random. But I will say that I think that supports are going to be more emphasized in my opinion opinion because if you don't have them then that is obviously something that could really honestly propel your account immensely when you're talking about just being able to have that consistency of clearing content now the first thing here that i also want to mention as well is that we are looking at units at r0 okay i don't want to look at them as you know r4 and r6 like that's not the goal because a lot of players are just going to be getting their probably first copy of something or they're going to be getting something if you're returning players just going to be just that you know it might be a r1 it might not even be like crazy so i'm not going to go too crazy with like trying to go into r2s and all that other stuff but keep in mind i think that with these units at their initial value they are going to be great investments when you're looking at rezos as well so so, um, of course, if you want more information on R2s and stuff like that, I will have more videos coming for like best R4s, best R6s, stuff like that. Uh, make sure you guys check out my last video I did for my R2 uh, top choices, okay? So, now, first things first, we got Clara, all right? <laughs> so, with Clara, Clara is going to be one of my, uh, in my top 10. Now, the reason being is because Clara gives you a lot of value at R0. Now, before you even get her to R2, so what exactly is her R2? Because I have her R2, so I want to show you guys. It's just transparency here, okay? Uh, R2, she gets immunity extension of two turns. Now, before that, that means that when you're looking at her skills, her R3 is going to have one turn immunity and everything else is the same. So, all allies, AP plus 20%, heals all allies, healing is 35% of the target's max HP, dispels one debuff from each ally. If the ally has no debuff, then grant some immunity, it would be for one turn. Now, her passive is still the same, so upon healing, dispels one debuff from the target, and then the excess healing amount turns into shield coverage, um, which is 120% of that, and then the uh, S1 is going to be allowing her to be able to heal and prioritize her allies with the lowest HP threshold, uh, cleansing, obviously because of the passive, and then giving excess shield if they are if there is no one that's damaged. So again, when we're talking about a unit that I feel like is going to help you drastically shift how long you're able to sustain a fight, right? Uh, units like Clara are gonna be massive. Being able to do better in like pieces of content like PVP, Clara is massive for movement. So this is a unit that just across the board is gonna be like really Really, really good if you're looking for a amazing healer for a pep this is one of the units you want to get right uh so again i think that is just really really important to select units that are going to give you the most value um and again there's a couple of units that i want to talk about too that didn't get mentioned but i'll talk about why they did it right so um we're going to go ahead and move on. So next unit is going to be Ahmed, right? I feel like this is a little bit obvious because I feel like I preach these units to people. Uh, so this is coming at number two. Uh, Ahmed is going to be one of the top choices. Now, out of the box, what exactly are you getting at R2? Because I want to show you where I'm currently at. At R2, he grants speed to a supporting song. So what does that mean? That means that before he gets anything else, all right, with the Rezos, that means that he's pretty much doing everything but granting that speed. So when you look at the supporting song, he's granting 4% base attack. And then with the R2, he's giving the speed stack, right? Now, the thing is, is that if you take that away, he's still, again, right? He's still going to be with the S3, team-wide ability cooldown minus one turn, performs healing 10 times, healing is 7.5% of Ama's max HP. Um, and then when you go to the passive, this is still going to be removing disease, is still going to be countering HP ceiling decrease, um, and then giving you the supporting song for the attack buff, not for the speed, okay? Uh, now, also with the S1, this is going to also be healing and prioritizing the ally. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's with the lowest HP value is how his also works. Um, so again, it's going to be a massive, massive thing if you're looking for some scale damage, also for some sustainability, an absolutely amazing unit for Fafnir. This dude is ridiculous in PvP as well. So again, 
it is just emphasizing that these supports aren't just disgusting for their respective PVE content, but for those that actually are enjoying and want to get more into PVP content, these units are also going to be actually really, really good. So Ahmed out of the box is going to be another excellent choice, I feel like. So I had, I had to throw him in here, okay? Now, next up on the list, y'all already know he's going to be on the list. We got Gaius, okay? We had to put Gaius on the list. Now, what exactly are you getting at Gaius uh, with the current resos that I have? And again, guys, this is just for the transparency so you don't think there's anything i'm not mentioning that you're like wait wait he gets this at reso we weren't talking about at beast okay but i feel like this is still important to mention so my r2 is giving him the accuracy uh increase um uh for his allies and the crit rate increase for his allies as well so they're both 20 percent. and then at r4 he is going to be able to heal himself okay so that's what i currently have in addition but outside of that what that means is is that when you're looking at the s3 uh you're going to be getting the extra turn for your uh your buffs increase you're getting extra shield um on top of that you're resetting his god king uh judgment cooldown uh he's also going to be gaining that 100 accuracy and inflicting seer no matter what right uh and then of course when you're in that god king thunderstorm when you go into the normal mode you're going to be granting all ally shield regardless um you're also going to be giving that buff plus one turn uh recess the cooldown of thunder judgment uh and then he's also going to be giving himself that 100 crit rate not the allies crit rate okay so that's the extra extra there but he's going to also be dealing that extra damage when attacking so extra damage is eight percent of the target's max hp and up to 50 percent of gaius's attack so that is all him by himself now when we go to the s2 he's going to be still hitting lightning five random enemies or five times on random enemies um the damage is 60 percent of attack prioritizing different enemies every time and it's minus 25 percent attack each hit um on a new or, or on the same enemy uh then he's also going to still be dispelled Spelling them, inflicting buff blocker as well. And then the S1 is going to be stunning. Okay, so damage with some stun. Um, and as well as increasing their debuffs plus one turn. This dude's kit is just so stupid. But then when you're in the God King mode, he's gonna be nuking for that uh 150% damage. Um, again, still inflicting buff blocker, and then for the S1, he's going to be able to still buffs, and this is gonna be AoE. Now, again, guys, this is the value you're getting for guy. Like, and this is why I can't emphasize how good this this dude is because this is the value you're getting before you even consider rezos rezos just give him little extra things to do what he already does better so again an excellent choice i feel like for those that are looking for a unit that's really going to give you that extra kind of oomph to your account and i'm not gonna lie like guys can hard carry you as a as a dps um for the entirety of your account and that has been proven so yes guys is number three on the list now we're gonna move on to number four here now, number four is actually another unit um, that I feel like is actually really, really good for just what you need to be doing when you first are starting your account, and it's Intasar. Um, Intasar, which I have no rezzles on her, she's actually amazing. Honestly, I feel like, yes, when you get rezzles on her, that's gonna make her even more broken. I think her R2 is probably one of the most notable things. Um, so when uh, she is without stealth, she launches a pursuit attack for her transmit virus, um, but, oh, I went back too far. <laughs> Let me go back to the units. I, I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet. Uh, but when you go into her S3, which is the transmit virus, um, it is going to essentially allow her to gain attack up for two turns. She hits an enemy once um, or one enemy two times. Uh, she's going to inflict defense, play, uh, d defense break. Then she can also inflict an attack down. She gains stealth. Um, and in that stealth, uh, if she has the stealth, she has uh, the opportunity to deal extra true damage damage and it's 15% of the target's max HP. Damage against bosses is 3% and even then it still does a pretty solid amount of damage if she's built properly. Um, you're also going to have the S2 uh, which is where she th has the ability to AoE all enemies but the fewer the enemies the higher the damage. She can increase enemy debuffs plus one turns besides stun um, and at the start of combat she gains stealth for two turns and then with the S1 she is also able to inflict miss rate up so this makes her one of the best choices that you can get for a dps or one of the top choices i should say for a dps for chronos so that is one of the things i also think that gives her a lot of value is that she's going to help you with something that you really honestly need to be perfecting so that you're able to honestly kind of decide the trajectory of wherever you know you're trying to go or what your aim is on your account for the for the full duration of your experience in dislay so she is really really solid um again 
I will say this is the value you're getting before you even consider Rezzles, which I think is still pretty good value. So I feel like she was out of the list, really, really deserving of being slotted here because she is, I feel like she kind of gets overshined by some of the speed clear units, but Antasar is actually very, very good. So I had to throw her in here. Now, the next unit, um, which I kind of surprised that they're doing this but again if she does pop up and you don't have the resources to pull for her on banner we're gonna have to throw gabby in here okay so gabby is on the listing for the flaming echo which i was kind of surprised they did that because she is going to be in the gotcha as well so that is and you can use wish stones for her right now which again if you don't have the resources to get her and you really wanted her, but the fl and the flaming echo decides to give you her as an option and you don't got any other thing to, to decide, don't get me wrong. This is not a terrible unit to pick by no means. She is going to be one of your top choices as well. Um, so with that, this is going to make Gabby coming in at number five. All right. So uh, with that, when we're looking at her results, I do have her max result because at one point she was free. So technically I did this free to play. So that's what I mean by they need to just keep whoever is like fusion, like just keep them fusion. Okay. So what she's getting at her resos, um, extra damage, right? Um, extra damage. <laughs> and then on the last for the R6 is where she gets the immunity coverage, um, extension extended to three turns right now. The thing is, is that what I would say is if you're looking at this unit in the perspective of, oh, well, you know, she's broken because you have her R6. So listen, I will say this. R6 does help out a lot when you're talking about extension of immunity coverage, but two turn immunity is enough. I right, ever being honest, like Three turn immunity is just ridiculous. So when you're talking about what she's able to do, she's giving you the attack down, defense up, immunity coverage. Now, the thing is, is that the immunity would be two turns, right? So everything is going to be two turns, the attack down, the defense up, then the immunity coverage, um, as well as the S2. You're going to be getting that defense down for two turns as well. Uh, the extra damage is from the Rezo. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, then, of course, with the S1, she's also going to be able to do some damage and she'll also be able to do some extra damage off of her speed as well now the thing that's also important to mention with gabby is again gabby can be built as a dps and still tank she can be built as a tank and still tank she can do damage she can be a stun unit she is literally one of the best supports in the entire game so even though i have her at the fifth slot that doesn't mean anything she is still one of the best i repeat she is one of the best supports in the entire game okay so with that this is going to definitely give her a slot on the list. And like I said, if you don't have the resources or the wish stones to be able to pull for it, and she does come up as an accessible option, I definitely think you should go for it. So just going to throw that in there, but we're going to move on. Next unit that we're going to be putting on the list coming in at number six, it's actually going to be Abigail. Okay. So why Abigail? Now, as you can see, my Abigail is not even R2, so we don't even have to go that deep. Now, one thing I will say, and this is one of the reasons why I don't use my Abigail as much as I would like to, is because my Abigail is not max skilled up, but Abigail is absolutely broken. You can use her in PVE. You can use her in PVP. She is amazing. But I will say the caveat to trying to use her in PVP is that you are going to need her S3 to be max skilled. I cannot stress that. She will not perform as well as you would like her to against other abigails that are max skilled and we're going to jump into why so what exactly are you getting out of the box with this with this woman you're getting granting ally at max skill 100 percent ap push if the ally has fallen she revives and heals them healing 10 percent of their max hp if the ally has not fallen she then will grant them a cooldown of minus three turns she also grants absorb and attack up to all allies for two turns now there's one unit that we got for free that this might remind you of ude right uh there's the only other unit in the entire game that can give somewhat some similar aspects to what abigail has and that is one of the things that also makes ude so broken is she's literally like the shimmer four star version of abigail this i think minus the ap push like literally so and the revive now with that s2 is also going to be giving you recovery defense up and shield for two turns all this stuff right shield strength is 10 percent of abigail's max hp and 25 percent of the target's lost hp which ends up being a significant amount of shield by the way because it's factoring in that if your allies are taking damage the shield ratio honestly should be a 
little bit better um, because of the fact that you're also now factoring in lost HP as well. So then to add even more to what she does, she is also able to sleep with the S1 and then can restore HP and she's able to heal 3% of the max HP. Now, the thing is, is that this makes her also good for Sentinel Hunt um, or not Sentinel Hunt. No, no, it is Sentinel Hunt. It is Sentinel Hunt. It's for the freaking raid bosses. I was thinking I was saying Dark Star Lord, but Sentinel Hunt, she's actually good for. Um, and then, of course, again, respectively, you can use her in things like a pep or you can use her in things like uh, PvP, for example. So this is an excellent, excellent unit. And I definitely think that out of the box, she does give a lot of value. But if you are going to use her, you got to have that last that skill three, man. I'm telling you, it's going to make a huge difference. Um, having that skilled up is going to be one of the most important things. OK, now another unit that made the list and I could not could not not include her was Athena okay now Athena just had an event so I know some people will be like well I'm skipping her but I will say Athena is absolutely amazing um, I think that this is a unit that without a doubt you are going to want to pick up I actually love her and I don't even have any rezzles in her yet so with rezzles she's going to be even more amazing but she is an absolute amazing unit um, she is able to gain uh, gain invincibility she grants attack up for two turns she dispels all buffs on a selected enemy and it cannot be resisted right uh, now the other thing is she inflicts crit rate down and for this is for three turns guys so this is before this is before you even get to any rezzles okay um, now on top of that, she's also able to do damage with 50% of attack. She inflicts the crit rate down on all enemies for two turns and deals damage. The damage is 120% of attack. Before casting this ability, Leora gains War Goddess for one turn, which when she's in the war, the war Goddess, crit rate is equal to or greater than the targets, amplifies her damage. The greater crit rate gap, the more damage she has amplified. She grants all allies shield for one turn right before they take a critical hit, and the shield strength is based on Leora's attack, right? Now, on top of that, uh, if Elaine is on the team, which I, I really don't want to consider this part too much because what are the chances are you going to be using them together? Probably like none. <laughs> so uh, with that, either way, if Leora is on the team or uh, Elaine is on the same team with Leora, uh, she then will have her war goddess increase for two turns. Um, and then um, that's pretty much that. Right. So uh, at the start of combat, if Elaine is an enemy, she would then gain the dawn glow, which is crit damage is plus five percent. So, again, that's if you're fighting a Elaine, which is super, 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 super isolated in terms of the situation of that and really the opportunity of that happening. So, again, I will say for what it's worth, you're getting the invisibility, the attack up and the crit rate down and the opportunity to dispel all buffs on a selected enemy, whoever she hits, which if you're doing Kronos is going to be the boss. She can be used in PVP, which makes her absolutely amazing. Um, you're seeing her even in the trial content doing some work. So she's just really, really good. Now with the S2, she's able to grant all, all allies standoff below 50% HP for two turns. And then for that grant standoff to the remaining allies for one turn. Um, and then for each surviving teammate, excluding herself, she is able to increase her damage by 10%. So again, this unit is kind of disgusting. And when we're like mentioning units that are remotely close or on the same level as Gaius, Athena is one of those units, okay? Now, again, with the S1, she is also able to inflict Seer and AP pushback 15%. Uh, and then at the start of combat, she is able to reset all her ability cooldowns. So yes, she is very much so like Gaius, whereas if she goes into a new wave, her abilities are reset. Whereas Gaius is, it's this S3 that resets, all of her abilities reset, which is just ridiculous. So again, when you're looking at another option, or a unit that can give you that same value, I think that Athena is definitely on the list, okay? Now, moving on. Another unit that we're going to throw into the mix here, uh, and this is going to be coming in at number eight, if I'm not mistaken, uh, my numbers might be mixed up, is gonna be, where's she at? Embla, okay? Now, Embla is actually going to be a really, 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 really broken unit now the thing is, is that i have mine at r2 and what exactly am i getting at r2 i just got her at r2 and i've been using her prior to that but uh she gets the auto detonation of the corrupted seed also damages targets other than the carrier um and damage is 150 percent of the caster's attack so this allows her to be able to have an aoe spread um in terms of the damage with the corrupted seed but before you even consider that what exactly are you getting right um with that desolate uh desolate flower um so attacks one enemy two times damage is 100 120% of attack, 60% chance of inflicting defense down for two turns, and inflicts one corrupted seed stack, 
right now also the s2 is also going to be giving you the opportunity to steal buffs and the second hit detonates the enemy's corrupted seed and inflicts or inf infects another enemy with corrupted seed now the thing is what exactly is corrupted seed now you see it's super long so enemies afflicted with corrupted seed gained an extra stat when attacked they may also gain disease for two turns um at a 50 percent chance and a debuff will be dispelled from the attacker corrupted seed will detonate when they are dispelled from the carrier without reaching max stat detonation deals damage and inflicts bleed for two turns damage is 35 percent of emblem's attack per stack per stack okay now it, it stacks up to seven times by the way so we're just gonna put that out there now uh it actually i'm lying it's eight times now the thing is is that when the corrupted seed reaches max stats of eight or the carrier dies and auto detonation is triggered all detonation uh damage to both the carrier max stat and their allies that is the rezzo at that point okay now uh outside of that emblem also is going to be able to gain 30 percent ap when corrupted seeds are removed uh, and emblem's death clears all corrupted seeds on the battlefield so just keep that in mind but disease and bleed is going to be really important and the cool thing about what she's bringing to the table is that if you have allies that are hitting these enemies while they're inflicted with corrupted seed they can proc the disease so what does that mean if you're looking for an option to replace Joser? Ebla is a really good option um, and she also brings damage to the table as well so that's another thing that you can kind of consider there um, but again when you're also looking at her s1 she's also going to be able to inflict the corrupted seed with this as well so she's just a debuff monster so honestly when she's invested she ends up being what i would consider the better version of jiang mong or the scaled version of jiang mong uh just because she's able to then she's able to perform pursuit attacks as well um and on top of that um when she is doing this she's able to perform the tattered sword which again is just going to allow her to be just spreading the corrupted seed more and more and more so she's just really really solid um i feel like for what it's worth she is actually very good at a pep. Uh, you will see Embla in, if I'm not mistaken, some Sentinel Hunt situations. Uh, and I definitely use her for wave clearing content. So things like Tower, for example, uh, definitely Calamity, you'll see her. So she is just absolutely amazing. So I had to throw her in the listing as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. Now, coming in at number nine, uh, believe it or not, I know a lot of people are going to be surprised by this. It's going to be T. So I actually put T on the list. Um, I know you do get the Fatum Sisters, but I do think that T is still really, really good because she actually gets a generalized speed lead. Now, what am I getting with the Rezzles that I currently have? Again, transparency. Um, if there's an ability on cooldown, she gets 20 extra speed. Uh, then on top of that, uh, Nightbringer, uh, upon successfully absorbing AP, she inflicts silence on the target for two turns. Now, again, these are really, really good things because, again, when you're looking at things like PvP or even her in PvE, uh, she is going to be a really, really solid unit to still utilize now uh, what exactly are you getting for her now you have one of the only units in the game that's really honestly able to do this uh, she's able to still 30 percent of a of each enemy's ap and she shares it equally among all allies right now this is something that ends up being really really good especially when you're talking about pushing back and pushing forward it creates a much bigger gap and it allows you to be able to truly rotate teams like it is actually a ridiculous ability now on top of that you have an s2 that's able to inflict speed down and stun um as well at a 60 percent chance uh for one turn and this is on a three turn cooldown when you have it max and then the s1 is going to be able to ap pushback and it has an 80 percent chance of stealing 30 percent of the enemy's AP. AP. So that means that any collective point, she could be stealing roughly about 60% of any like singular ally or singular enemies AP and then redistributing that is just kind of insane now again what i also mentioned as well is that she does have a generalized speed lead so she is still going to be a really really good unit as a lead for pvp um and even if you're looking to utilize her in things like chronos like say for example you don't got the fatum sisters but you end up getting her or she ends up being one of your better options then t is still a really really solid unit that you can utilize um i will say she doesn't get as much shine as some other units anymore especially once you get your account developed but i think that for those that are working their accounts up from early game into mid game she still holds a lot of value and i will say again even for in game players i still see her in high tier point war just because she is a speed lead and you can build her to be very very fast so again a really really solid unit that i think on a pve and a pvp sense right out the box gives you a lot of value now the last unit that is going to be coming in at number 10 okay number 10 is actually going to be 
Ashley, okay? Now, I put Ashley on the list because I feel like damage amplification is extremely important. And because most people won't have access right away to units like Alice because she's a shimmer. Um, she is going to be a, another alternative. I will I would say that you can honestly, if built properly, she can be literally utilized and all three ritual miracles. And a lot of people think that that's a joke, but Ashley can be used in all three ritual miracles. And that's one of the things that I think that kind of sets her apart as a fighter is that she has a lot of support elements. Now, again, transparency here. What exactly are my resos giving her? Um, my resos, each uh, surviving enemy grants accuracy of 6%. And then at the R2, uh, Daring Spirit grants shield to all allies for one turn and shield strip for 50% of Ashley's attack, right? Now, that means that everything that she's doing here is what you get out of the box. So, gains defense up and shield for two turns. Shield strength is 200% of attack and gains Rainbow Bridge stacks. Rainbow Bridge, when an ally triggers a crit within their turn, they deal additional true damage equal to 10% of the target's max HP, up to 100% of Heimdall's attack, and they reduce the target's AP by 10%. Can only be triggered once per, tar uh, per target per turn, and when an ally is attacked by a critical hit, increases all allies' AP by 10%, and this can only trigger once per turn. When the effect is triggered, it consumes the buff and up to one stack per turn. So it stacks up to seven times. Now, the other thing is, is that she also grants attack up uh, to our allies for two turns and shield for one turn. Now, keep in mind, that is a rezzo, so just kind of throwing that out there. But she does grant that once you get her to that point. Now, the S2 is going to be able to inflict attack down to all enemies. Um, and as well, she's going to also be able to inflict stun. So if the target's attack is lower than Ashley's, is also where this kicks in. It's a 50% chance of inflicting that stun. Then you also have the, which also, I just want to throw this in here. Nine times out of ten, they're going to have lower attack now. This chick's attack is usually the highest on the field because a lot of builds for her is all attack. So I just want to throw that in there. Now, with the S1, um, the other thing that you're also going to be getting is inflicting speed down. So you're getting a really, really nice ratio of buffing and debuffing with Ashley. Now, she also brings to the table a captain lead of 30% if you do decide to use her for that, which I will say that is a pretty common, commonly used attack lead. So again, the value that she's able to give you in your entire party is really really high right out the box this isn't like i gotta go and get rezzles for her. a lot of her value is really honestly from her innate, her innate kit and then the extras is what you get from the rezzles so those are going to be the top 10 espers now i want to give you guys a couple of different honorable mentions that you if you do get them i think they are still worthy of pickups one of them is going to be tricky tricky is still one of a kind i always throw him in the list as an honorable mention because i don't think he's ever like one of those units you want to just hardcore go for unless you have nothing else to pick up um dude is with his passive is one of the biggest things he's able to inflict pe uh, petrification um if an ally or if an enemy decides to try to remove any debuffs early he will then hit them with also an HP damage, um, like reductions or an HP, uh, sta uh, I guess, kind of like ceiling. There we go. That's the word. HP ceiling of 30%. Now, on top of that, he is also able to uh, stun with the S3 if you build him that way and remove and extend all debuffs and buffs right so dude is ridiculous if you build him that way uh, another unit i have to throw in there is hide now again i will say hide at r0 is a little bit of a eh but i will say you can't build him tankier in those situations and you can still get some work done but i definitely think that this is a unit that if he shows up on the list and you don't have any other better options He's still a really nice pickup, I will say. Um, now, on top of that, I think the last unit that I want to throw onto there uh, is, and really it's the, these two, is because it's their R0s. I feel like they have more value at R2s. It's going to be Yunchuan, um, who, again, at R2 is absolutely broken because it takes his uh, third eye seal passive and it makes it something that can proc off of any of his allies, which is, again, he still has value. But I will say I had to throw him in the honorable mention just because I feel like he gives you the most value or he really honestly picks up in value when he's at R2. Um, and same thing with Brewster. I feel like Brewster is another unit that, again, he gives you that same follow up value. But when he hits R2, the dude literally becomes 
becomes a monster, okay? Now, again, Brewster is going to have the very, very similar aspect um, with the reload and attack assist when teammates attack. Uh, the next attack transfers one debuff to the enemy and restores Brewster's HP. Um, and then when attacking, he's also able to gain AP based on the number of reload attack stacks, which is 6% AP per stack. So these are some really, 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 really good units that I really honestly feel like would be some, you know, kind of like, all right, I ain't getting nothing else. I can still select these. So again, that's going to be the 10 with my honorable mentions, guys. Let me know who you feel like should be on this list or who you're going to actually aim for if you are able to get them. So I hope that this video was able to help and give you guys insight on something that I feel like is a really, really big, big question. So that's going to be that, guys. Stay blessed, stay charged up, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.